the Spirit of Jazz podcast, where music dances with mystery, with your hosts, Bill Carter and Jeff Kellum. Happy New Year, everyone. This is Bill Carter, and this is the Spirit of Jazz. Happy New Year to you, Bill Carter. We're back. Did you have a good New Year? Uh, I had a, a, a COVID New Year, yes. Uh, oh, how are you yeah, feeling? COVID was a piece of cake. It was no worse than, in fact, it was much better than my previous Christmas colds had been. So everything's fine now. But, you know, that kind of put a damper on things. You know, your voice has those sonorous tones back. Uh, yes, without the nasal, uh, I think, and without the clearing of the throat. So <laughs> yeah, I'm back. Good. Well, good. Well, we we had a rockin' uh, Christmas Eve service with the Presby Pop Christmas Eve band. Uh, went an hour and 45, and it's up on YouTube. In fact, we'll put the link up for people to watch it if they care to see it. Great. I, I watched the first hour uh, from 11 to midnight, <laughs> um, and I could blame the uh, last 45 minutes on COVID if I wanted to, but um, I, I just kind of gave it up at that point. But it's always a thrill to to watch that come together. And although the music is often the same from year to year, it's like jazz, it changes from year to year as well. But uh, the way you approach the, the, the carols and the original music, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I highly recommend going to it, no matter the season. Well, I had an undergraduate degree in philosophy with a specialty in Greek philosophy, the ancient Greeks, and Heraclitus, the great philosopher, said something I've never forgotten. It's kind of a jazz thought. No one can step into the same river twice. <laughs> yeah, that's that's jazz. You're right. That's it just right. keeps rolling along. How did you spend New Year's Day? New Year's Day, oh my, there was nothing to it. Well, I recorded another episode of my my new radio show. Oh, do tell. What is this radio show? Bill, through the years, of all these years I've played music on the radio, I've collected these albums of jazz, and then some friends have given me albums. I've actually bought a few here and there. So I've got hundreds upstairs in the attic, old plastic records in the attic. But rather than calling the radio show old plastic records in the attic, it's called classic vinyl jazz. So Mm -hmm. I'm playing nothing but vinyl, which limits, of course, some of the music that I would love to play. But if I don't have it on vinyl, I can't play it. I found a, a radio station in Binghamton, New York, a community radio station, not a public station, but community. Mm -hmm. It's a low power station, which means that it probably reaches about 10 miles from the transmitter, but okay. it's available online. Almost anything these days is online. So you, you can Google Bundy Museum, Binghamton, New York, and you'll find a link to WBDY. Well, we will do that, and we'll put the link up for people. What, what's what been your favorite episode so far? Well, they're, they're all about the same in that there's no theme to them. Uh, I, I look through my music and think, well, what, what would go with this? So it's everything from, you know, Lena Horn does Latin to um, some Duke Ellington. And then, you know, Bill, not everything is a classic. I mean, right. I'm going to play nothing but but the old saws, as it were. I'm assuming that vinyl itself is classic. Yeah. Well, <laughs> some GRP uh, in there, uh, certainly a lot of Blue Note. And some DRG, I think that's a, a record label. And so a lot of Columbia stuff that I've gotten through the years. One thing I just played uh-huh. was Billy Joel. He did this gig at some college in Connecticut, and it was released as a promo, and only a few copies were pressed. It's a demo album that fell into my hands when I was at a radio station. Nobody else wanted it. Hey, is that the one with the 10-minute version of New York State of Mind? That's the one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. I've never heard it, but I've heard you... Uh... Uh, wax on about it, shall we say? Well, the, the New York State of Mind begins with this shtick where he talks about being in a jazz club, and he's got this walking bass in the background, and he kind of makes fun of it a little bit, and then the piano introduction to New York State of Mind comes in. There's a sax solo in New York State of Mind by Billy Joel that has this Richie Canada, who was his sax player for many years in the mid-'70s. You know, every once in a while, uh, these jazz artists, especially sax players, I think, and uh, Mm on occasion some piano players wind up on some rock star's album, and you you kind of overlook it, but you realize, huh, there's a little bit of influence here that we'll overlook. 
And the story goes that the great saxophonist Phil Woods was in the studio with his quartet, and they're recording some music, I think, at RCA Studios in New York. And when they paused, there was a knock on the door, and Billy Joel's producer said, Hey, Phil, you want to make some quick cash? So they went over and blew two solos on this tune, and they spliced them together, apparently. Later on, that was my introduction to Phil Woods. He was the sax player on Just the Way You Are, which they played at our senior prom. I had no idea. I interviewed Phoebe Snow once. Phoebe Snow had a hit song back in the uh, late 70s, I think, called Poetry Man. She opened for Jackson Brown at a concert, and I went to visit her in her motel room to do an interview. She talked about being in the recording studios, I think for Columbia Records, and Teddy Wilson uh, happened by and was invited to play piano on one of her cuts. Recording studios, of course, are there might be three or four active at, at once in some of these large uh, metropolitan areas like New York and L.A., and people are walking by kind of mingling, you know? <laughs> Can't wait to, to listen, tune into the station. It broadcasts on Friday nights at 9 with a rerun on Saturday mornings at 10. So it'll be on each week uh, for an hour. Uh, I'm really having a great time with it, just... I finish one show and I start picking up the music for another. So it's yeah. it's really fun to be back into it. Well, that's how I feel about this podcast. Which uh, leads me to ask, what are your plans for 2024? Well, New Year's Eve, the 31st, I was sitting on the couch and said to my wife, I think I want to start that project today. She said, well, call your young friend, Ryan. He's tall, he's strong, and he has a good back. So I called up my friend, Ryan, six foot seven. He's home to visit his mom and his dad. And uh, he came over. We tore down a wall. So we are expanding the Presby Bop International Headquarters into what used to be two rooms. Wow. Oh, excellent. So a little less congestion. I can have the uh, instruments and the keyboards in one part and all the music cabinets uh, in the other. It's kind of like the composer's lair. So that's one thing, but really the big project is this uh, book that I've been working on for probably 25 years. Yeah. It's taken that long. Actively wrote it over a year, was going to do it 2020 to 21, and had a grant from the Louisville Institute, kind of a spiritual think tank out in Louisville, Kentucky which helped subsidize the getaways and the writing time and the editorial process. Uh, the book is called Thriving on a Riff, Jazz and the Spiritual Life. I'm proud to announce to our listeners it'll come out on April 23rd, 2024. So we're lining up uh, some of the preliminary events. We'll have kind of a, a little preview concert of some of our music a couple days before near my home in Clark Summit, Pennsylvania. And there'll be book signings related to that. It's pretty exciting. My wife asked me the other day if you'd be doing uh, personal appearances and if you'd be promoting the book musically. Are you going to go around to uh, the country and play piano? And Well, that would be great. Uh, pianos are tough to uh, drag along. You know, if there's a Barnes & Noble not far from you or... Um, say, a bookstore in your hometown. I'd be up for at least uh, dropping by, talking to people about the book. And if there's a way to get some music there, that would be great, too. So the book, you said, has been uh, simmering for 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. How in the world do you take that simmering thought and move it toward pages where you have to actually have a beginning and an end and chapters in between? Well... You wrap some of it in stories, and you look for groupings of stories or narratives. When it, the book comes out, some of our attentive listeners will say, you know, this chapter sounds an awful lot like a, an episode from the Spirit of Jazz podcast. Some of the stories will be familiar, sure. Yep, particularly some of the early ones, because uh, we're now revealing what's been perking for some time. Uh, um, and. Uh, you spend some time trying to mull over, you stare off into space and, and begin to look at the connections. And this is a tie into the spirituality of jazz. Well, I wouldn't call it that. I'm going to call it the spiritual life. Okay, yeah. And, okay. and here's the difference. I don't know what spirituality is. 
I just don't know. That's a concocted word. It's blurry. It's blurry. It's fuzzy. It sounds like too much time in the bath water at the spa. But the spiritual life means more of an integration, a connection between what your heart believes and trusts and what your mind thinks and what you do with your hands and your feet. Uh, what, what do you do with your life? And the more I began to seek the connections between the spiritual life and this, this passionate music, I, I realized, you know, there, there's a lot that needs to be uncovered and connected. I, I think in future episodes here, we'll talk about some of those things, uh, particularly the role of race and racism, and maybe even organized crime in the development of jazz. Kind of fascinating history, with yeah. the, especially with the organized crime. Plus, I would think that the issue of addiction and one's physical health uh, or one's mental health tied into right. the, the expressions of jazz. And the spiritual life coincides with all of this. I mean, we're not body and soul. We're integrated. We're not either or. I want to tap that a bit. You know, and the spiritual life is about here and now. It's not about then after we die. Mm -hmm. with our hopes to get a harp and float on a cloud. No, it's about how you're living right now. Mm -hmm. And how is this infused with spiritual values and an awareness of both human frailty and human transcendence? Mm. Where does God intersect? Where does uh, God's spirit motivate and inspire? How does all this come together? So I'm, I'm not talking about jazz musicians kind of waking up and going to church, although there is a chapter about that. But it's more about what does it mean to live forward with inspiration and creativity? I immediately think of Duke Ellington's piano being housed at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or, or you think of St. Peter's Church in New York, which... Right, which has uh, Billy Strayhorn's piano, which I've been privileged to play. Yeah. <laughs> now, the uh, title of the book is Thriving on a Riff. What in the world does that mean? Okay, well, I copped the title from a Charlie Parker tune. Uh -huh. Charlie Parker wrote a tune called Thriving on a Riff. He copped the harmonic sequence from I've Got Rhythm. <laughs> so it's that venerable jazz tradition of taking something and building on it. Yeah. So the, a riff is a repeated phrase, and I want to talk about thriving, holistic thriving, and then, again, make the connection jazz and the spiritual life. Yeah. yeah. So it's coming out on Broadleaf Books. It's already available now for pre-sale on Amazon or Broadleaf or Barnes & Noble or any other place. So I have a publicist assigned to me, and we're going to be getting really in people's faces about this, which makes me a little squeamish. Although you studied philosophy in college, this is not a book that's all theological essays. You're telling a lot of stories, focused stories about jazz musicians and their art and their relationships. Right. And what lies beneath them and what lies within them and what's connected to them. You know, a lot of people have no idea. Dave Brubeck was a man of profound religious faith, wrote at least uh, 13 major sacred oratorios, most of them too difficult for the average choir to sing. Yeah. But that was part of his uh, spiritual commitment. And they don't know probably that he wrote the first piece when his nephew had died of a brain tumor. Yeah. Um, and he wrote the words of Jesus, let not your hearts be troubled, believe in God, believe also in me. It's unearthing some of those stories, which uh, the jazz business has pretty much uh, sanded away. You know, Tord Gustafsson, the Norwegian pianist who processed uh, the loss of his nephew and his brother by, by writing these kind of sacred jazz chants, which are now out on ECM records. None of that story is told in Downbeat magazine. Mm -hmm. At least not much, uh, certainly none by the publicist for the record company. You know, so I want to get at the, you know, what what's going on in these musicians as they create and as they make their work accessible for us all. Yeah. Sometimes, too, uh, the secular, um, pardon the expression, the secular jazz musician 
write something that is spiritually alive without their even knowing that it's right. touching the heart and going much deeper than mm -hmm. the jazz club, for example. Well, and in these days after Christmas, uh, let's just toss around the word again, incarnation. Mm -hmm. You know, the spiritual becomes the earthly, becomes the human. Um, that a word takes flesh, and if it has flesh, then it can tap its foot. Um, <laughs> and the heart's beating in 4-4 four, four time. And it's just all of that. Um, and it's not some kind of esoteric escape from the rigors and difficulties of daily life, but an integration of the difficulties with the joys and the disappointments with the, the possibilities. Yeah, yeah. Well, it sounds like 2024 is going to be an exciting year for you uh, when the book comes out in April from Broadleaf Books. And then the the work of supporting that book and letting people know about it, which will give you a few speaking engagements here and there, uh, maybe maybe more than you could handle. Uh, and also maybe some um, maybe some opportunities for the band to play along with me. I mean, we're already looking at April. Uh, International Jazz Month, not only is the uh, release of the book, but kind of the pre-release concerts and some things like that that will emerge from it. So uh, and then if anybody's listening and they want to get in touch, uh, send me an email at office at presbybop.com. That's P-R-E-S-B-Y-B-O-P. -E a member of our staff will get back in touch with you. So as I look at the two things that we have going for the two of us in 2024, my thing goes into the airwaves and disappears. Your <laughs> thing is published in a book and will stay on library shelves for a long time to come. Uh, or re on remainder shelves at Barnes & Noble. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't come to that. Dollars <laughs> in the cutout. Well, bed. You never know. And for me, it's not about profit. It's about making a difference and sharing the gifts that have been given to us in a way that they can benefit others. That's what it's all about. So how about we listen to a piece of music? I was just going to say, it's time to play something. Yeah, what do you have in mind? Let's do a piece called Haunted Landscape. It's from our Psalms Without Words album, and yeah. it's a tribute to a wonderful retreat center called Ghost Ranch, northern New Mexico, kind of a haunting tune. This is Haunted Landscape.
So that's called Haunted Landscape, and it's from the two-CD set called Psalms Without Words with the Presby Bop uh, Quartet. Quintet? That's a quintet on that cut. You know, we've both been to Ghost Ranch. We both know that it's a place of wonder and beauty. And also, if you're there for a retreat, rather than just looking at Georgia O'Keeffe's estate, um, you do find a, a place of renewal there, which is what we hope will happen to all of us in 2024. That's right. And while you're there, you might even see a, a Roadrunner cartoon being filmed. It's that kind of red rock beauty. Right, right. But Jeff, it's always good to spend some time with you. Well, thank you. And once again, Happy New Year to you and to everyone who's listening to the Spirit of Jazz podcast. Take good care. Thanks for listening to the Spirit of Jazz podcast. This is a production of Presby Bop Music. To find out more about Presby Bop, our music, concerts, and recordings, please explore our website at www.presbybop.com. And send us a note telling us what you think about the spirit of jazz. We'd love to hear from you. Check in with us again next time. I'm Jeff Kellum. And I'm Bill Carter. Thanks for tuning in.